of Sheol uh, today, <laughs> or actually yesterday, uh, right now, uh, I need to go to bed, but I wanted to do this, and do this recording, and then go to bed. It's 1.47 a.m. Central Time. But uh, yesterday, I had went to the eye doctor. Now, see, I, I have diabetes and everything, and uh, my eyes, I've been having a lot of problems with my eyes. And, of course, now I could probably go through a lot of details, but that would take forever, if I, so I'm not going to do that. But I will let you know. Uh, well, the good news, I didn't have glaucoma, or glaucoma, or however you want to pronounce it. I didn't have it. Uh, but what they said, uh, what they did say, be a little bit, what they did say, or should say what the doctor did say was that uh, I have a level, uh, like a level one or a mild um, cataracts and he, and he said uh, you know like with me being diabetic you know uh, at the right way my cataracts are uh, with my diabetes that and, and the way my cataracts are probably within the next two three years maybe four but uh, would get worse to where I'd end up having them removed. But overall, I must say, God is good. And, uh, you know, hey, it's one of the little things, but I know there's nothing impossible with God. Now, enough of that. Now, you might wonder, like, well, why has he got that old black and white, old 50s real look, or 30s real look thingy going on on this video? Well, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of think about it, reminded of something that Jeremiah talked about how that, you know, that we should uh, look for and, and seek the and ask for the old has the old ways wherein is the good way the right way so you know seeing you know, a lot of people we're, we live in a time where everyone wants to be modern and uh, all this kind of jazz right you know everyone wants to be modern do that modern thingy and keep up with the times and all this but now for Christians, this can this can be dangerous for us because then we're keeping in step in line with the ways of the world, and we find when we read the Bible that the ways of the world, the world, is an enemy of God. There, it's it's God's enemy, you know, and. And we as Christians, we are not a part of the world. We are supposed to be new. We are supposed to be resurrected. We we are supposed to, you know, in Christ, resurrected from our old way of life into a new life. And we are no longer citizens of this world. And here you hear uh, often about world citizens anymore you know it won't be such things as citizens of uh, let's say for here in the United States as uh, citizens of Kansas or citizens of the USA or whatever it'll be a citizen of the world uh -uh. we are citizens of heaven and since this is a case and again, as we read in God's Word, how that we are supposed to seek those things which are above, to have our minds, our thoughts, 
on those things above. Yeah. So the question is, where is your citizenship? Where is your thoughts? Where is your loyalty? Are you wanting to keep track with uh, the fads? Keep up with the times? I think, you know, people get caught up in things and then they try to keep up with the Joneses, what this church is doing. And because the church is doing it over here, so it can't be bad, you know. And But see, you know how disease uh, spreads. And, you know, I ain't going to go through all the medical terminology stuff. This is stuff you already know. All right, but it's the same way that it happens in the church. And there's a lot of churches that are infected. And there's some that are not. But the some that are not are few. But those who are infected are many. So, we need to know where our, our citizen, our citizenship truly lies. And we need to ask ourselves this question, and some others as well. But we should ask ourselves, hey, am I, am I really in Christ? Am I really a citizen of heaven? Have I truly been born again? And, you know, when you find, see those answers to those questions, then then what you need to do is take a, a, a look at what you need to do. If your answer is no to any of those questions, you need to uh, do something. Make a, a turn here or there. But you need to do something. We all need to. Uh, do a, a self-examination and not get caught up in the uh, fads and, and the things that are going on in the world around us. Because, see, we're not supposed to be caught up in the affairs of the world. No, that doesn't mean close your eye to your neighbor in need and that kind of thing. No. But the things of the world, we need to close our eyes to it. Their, their philosophies, their way of thinking, the way they behave. See, because as Christians, as God's elect, God's chosen, we are supposed to be a peculiar people. Different. Not the same as them. And yes, it is them, and then there's us type of kind of a thing <laughs> but not that you not that you're better than anybody else and it's on the outside you're not a, a better than one person above another so to speak like nose up in the air and snooty nose but in one sense you are only that you have made the right choice and they haven't but you got to also reach out to that person with God's help and guidance to reach that person out there and that they could have that opportunity to be able to come out of darkness into light and see what's going on and they can also become a citizen of heaven and they can be able to exit to, to leave the things of this world behind do you understand what I'm getting at you know but remember one thing here also now whatever uh, uh, people out there that hate you because you're a Christian and whatever lies they bring against you yes their lies and false accusations and stuff can hurt 
They're name callings, but you have to understand that something yet we also have to re need to think about is that we need to rejoice and should rejoice. For why? We have something greater. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you should pray for them and love them and don't turn your back on them. Don't, don't, don't be cold shoulder to where you don't have no concern except for just yourself. There's people that need you. They need to hear God's truth. The message of the cross. The message of hope. That there is something better. Because in this world, we're here where we're just pilgrims, just travelers. You know, there's there, you know, there's many things out there, and, and, and there's nothing for us. There's things out there that we shouldn't be concerned about, but there are things, but there is people we should be concerned about, and try to get them to help them uh, find a better place to move to from the present world to be able to, you know, from being a citizen of the world uh, so, they, uh, so they can be able to have an opportunity to become a citizen of heaven. Uh, anyway, I could go on to say more, but I, that was some things I wanted just to get you to think about, something I wanted to share. And if I didn't make myself clear on something, you know, I apologize. And I ask that you uh, ask me, <laughs> you know, and I'll try to do my best to, to make it clear. All right, so God bless you, and I hope that your day goes well. Or wherever you're at in this world, whether it's day or night, I hope that you will have a great day. And then maybe you can be able to uh, explain to someone uh, about a, a new plan that God has for them where they can uh, be able to get out of the this, this old world and have a new life. Because, you know, one day, you know, they're going to be able, uh, they could be able, to, if you can get them in, to come in to being a citizen of heaven, they'll be able to go to the wedding feast. Isn't that marvelous? What a great invitation. Yeah. Awesome. The wedding feast of the Lamb. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all, and shalom, and ho-ho.